Lateral flow immunoassay. What is it? How does it work? And why is it useful? On the channel we have talked about immunoassays before and now we will examine a very widely used real-life application of such assays in the form of a lateral flow immunoassay or LFIA for short. Before we dive into the immunoassay part of the test, we first should understand the working principle behind lateral flow or LF tests. Uh, my bachelor's thesis actually discussed the use of lateral flow tests in great detail, so this is a topic near to my heart. All uh, lateral flow tests or LF tests consist of three main pads plus a membrane. These different parts in order are the sample pad, the conjugate pad, the membrane, and the absorbent pad. The conjugate pad also contains one or several test lines where the target analyte can bind, in addition to a control line which ensures the functionality of the tests. Let us take a look at what happens when we apply a sample to a lateral flow immunoassay. First, the sample gets added to the sample pad which promotes and distributes the sample evenly towards the conjugate pad. In the case of lateral flow immunoassays, this is usually a labeled monoclonal antibody, which has been dried directly on the pad. Once the sample reaches this pad, if the target analyte, i.e. the sought after substance, is present, it binds to the monoclonal antibody. Then the sample molecules, some of which have bound to the antibody, flows to the membrane, which is usually made of nitrocellulose. It is essential that the membrane possesses good capillary forces and ease of binding. Here is where both the test line and control line is located. The test line is the first of these two and is coated with monoclonal antibodies that are also specific to the antigen of the target analyte. This means that if we can detect a signal at the site of the test line, the target analyte has successfully bonded twice to two different monoclonal antibodies specific to it. Then the unbound labeled antibodies continue to the control line where they bind to a secondary antibody. Thus a line from their label forms here as well and this allows us to check that the test is not faulty. Finally, the sample flows through to the absorbent pad. The primary function of the absorbent pad is to wick the fluid through the membrane. Cellulose filters are commonly used as the material for these absorbent pads. When the absorbent pad is present, the amount of sample can be increased, improving the sensitivity of the test. This is because it absorbs excess sample. So why are these lateral flow immunoassays so useful? Well, it is more than likely that you have already encountered one of these lateral flow immunoassays at least once in your life, and probably more these last few years. LFIAs are commonly used for home pregnancy tests as well as the COVID tests that we have all been having the pleasure to use probably several times these last couple of years. If you want to learn more about immunoassays, check out this playlist. Until next time.